Hello everyone, I'm uh, Jonathan and this is a presentation for my HPG 2021 paper co-authored with my uh, colleague Kenneth. The paper introduces a novel half edge based uh, refinement rule to uh, compute Calmore clock subdivision in parallel, possibly on the, the GPU. So to start things off, I'd like to briefly explain what Calmore clock subdivision is and what it's useful for. So it's essentially an algorithm that takes uh, as input a control cage. So a controlled cage is uh, a low poly mesh such as uh, this one. And given this control cage, it produces a uh, smooth surface, which is uh, visualized here. And the way this is done is uh, by actually uh, success successively sorry, uh, refining uh, the uh, control cage into these uh, quads that get smaller and smaller as uh, the refinement is repeated. So uh, it turns out that this algorithm produces an exponential number of these uh, quad faces. So for instance, uh, given this control cage here, composed of uh, 8,000 faces and uh, 10,000 vertices, uh, you are dealing with, after four levels of refinement, with uh, over 2 million quads and uh, vertices. So, in order to process such uh, large amounts of geometry, it's important uh, to uh, have a uh, efficient implementation, and a way of achieving this is by uh, deriving an, a parallel implementation that you can actually run uh, on your GPU. So back to the presentation. So this is the uh, control mesh I just showed and uh, the uh, subdivision surface computed out of it. And here's a, a couple of instances just to show how rich and detailed the uh, subdivision surface is. So why did we look into this in the first place? Well, it turns out that uh, nowadays uh, subdivision surfaces are used uh, everywhere, especially in production, but also uh, in video games. And so naturally most uh, interactive uh, editing tools uh, support it. And the way they do so is uh, by actually using Pixar's uh, open subdiv library which uh, unfortunately has a, a pretty severe limitation in that it's restricted to fixed uh, topologies. And the reason for this is because it's actually built on uh, feature adap adaptive subdivision, which is uh, a paper by uh, Niesner and colleagues that was uh, introduced a few years ago. And the way this works is uh, it actually pre-processes the uh, control cage uh, using the, the CPU and uh, the pre-processing stage uses it to uh, create a bunch of uh, bcubic patches that can be evaluated analytically uh, to uh, immediately evaluate the uh, limit surface produced by the, the subdivision. So uh, the, in terms of rendering, it's pretty efficient, but the uh, pre-processing stage is particularly slow. So for instance, here uh, I'm showing the armor guy I just uh, demoed uh, a few seconds ago, and you can see the result of the uh, pre-processing stage, which uh, creates these uh, bcubic patches pretty much everywhere. And in certain areas, it has to subdivide it uh, preemptively to uh, produce uh, a smooth surface. And it turns out that this uh, pre-processing stage is really slow on this particular asset. It takes over 10 seconds on my laptop, which obviously uh, is too slow for uh, an interactive modeling experience where you expect uh, the user to be frequently editing the, uh, the topology of his, uh, of his assets. So in this paper, we introduce uh, an alternative algorithm that supports uh, dynamic topology. And the way we do this is by introducing this uh, so-called half edge based uh, refinement rule that allows us to compute the subdivision efficiently. Uh, in terms of performance, uh, it turns out that uh, we are able to achieve four orders of magnitude speed ups with respect to open subdiv uh, on uh, static topolo uh, dynamic topology. Sorry, and in for the case of static topology, which is what uh, open subdiv is uh, built and optimized for, we. Uh, we run pretty much at the uh, same speed. So going back to my uh, interactive demo here, um, I'm just gonna show you some results. So here, uh, I'm gonna animate the mesh. And here, the subdivision takes uh, roughly three milliseconds on my RTX 2080 GPU. And here, the subdivision is computed as if the uh, topology wasn't static. So everything is computed from top to bottom. Uh, it turns out that this animation is in fact uh, fixed in terms of uh, topology, so open subdiv could render it. Uh, and so if I use this assumption, we have less computations to do, and algorithm uh, is pretty much faster because there's less uh, computations, obviously. Uh, 
So this is what uh, our demo uh, delivers, and uh, it's the source code that uh, we used for uh, our paper. So. So how did we do this uh, in the first place? So rather than uh, pre-processing like OpenSubdiv does the input mesh, we just had a look at the um, original cartmore uh, clark refinement rule. So that produces these uh, quests that get smaller and smaller and produce a uh, smoother surface. And what we did very simply was to add a bunch of arrows uh, that actually denote half edges. So there's a, there an additional uh, geometric uh, entity that we considered for this project. And what we realized was that uh, when we submit these arrows uh, to the uh, refinement rule, there's uh, a, a very simple uh, property that emerges, which is that the number of half edges after each uh, refinement step is multiplied by exactly four. And uh, this is uh, uh, this is quite powerful because it's invariant and it works uh, even if uh, the underlying mesh has non quad faces. For instance, here you have a triangle and a pentagon, and the number of half edges is is num is multiplied by four anyways. So based on this simple uh, observation, we derived our entire paper. So this is pretty much the insight, uh, the main insight I expect you to take away after this presentation. Very easy, so. And so uh, based on this observation, what we did was to devise uh, a one-to-four mapping of each half edge that we could compute uh, in a breadth-first order uh, on a parallel processor such as a, a GPU. So the rule is pretty simple. What we expect is that each half edge splits into four half edges that uh, build a quad face. So for instance, this red half edge here is split into these four ones, this blue one into these blue ones, and this green one into these ones. Okay, so for those of you who are not necessarily familiar with half edges, so a half edge data structure is uh, essentially uh, a data structure that provides these uh, six following operators. So there's twin, next, prevert, edge, and face. So twin is given an, a half edge, you should be able to retrieve uh, if it exists the opposite arrow with respect to uh, an edge. Next and prev are the next and previous half edge within a, uh, a, a given face. Uh, vertex is the, the vertex on which the, the arrow sits, so for this red arrow this would be the vertex. The edge is the this one for the red arrow once again, and the face is obviously the face within which the, uh, the half edge uh, exists. So to derive our implementation we had to uh, provide a, a way to evaluate these operators. So usually these are done using C C++ pointers typically, most uh, open source library rely on this. But for a GPU, this isn't uh, practical. So what we did uh, in the paper was to introduce uh, an indexed based uh, polygon, mes uh, polygon mesh sorry, representation that works as follows. So first, there's the, the vertex buffer that um, stores the uh, 3D positions of the vertex points of the mesh. And then there's a half edge buffer that stores um, six integers per half edge. So in this particular asset, there's uh, 12 half edges, and I'm storing six integers for each one of these. And these uh, integer values actually store what would be returned by the uh, operators I just uh, described. So for instance, for this half edge here, this blue half edge here, which is uh, indexed by number one, so that's the first, uh, um, that's element number one in the half edge buffer. Uh, the vertex ID here is number two, so we have a, a two uh, integer, uh, integer value two. The twin is half edge seven, so we store seven here. Next and previous is two and zero, so two and zero. The face ID is zero here, and the edge ID is four which is edge number four here. Um, another property of our representation is that each half edge is stored in such a way that the face IDs are consecutive in memory. So here you have these uh, zeros, one and twos uh, consecutively in memory. And what is this is useful for is because if you're dealing with uh, semi-regular meshes, so in the case where you have, say, quad-only meshes, which is what happens uh, when you're dealing with uh, camel clock subdivision, you don't actually have to store uh, the next brev and faces in memory because you can compute them uh, analytically. So in practice, what we do is we represent uh, the control cage using these uh, this uh, explicit half edge buffer with uh, six integer values. And when we subdivide the mesh, each subdivision level is represented using only three integers uh, per half edge. And so based on this representation, we uh, derive uh, the, some explicit formulas in our paper to uh, implement this uh, one to four mapping uh, for the half edges. 
So with these operators at hand, we then derive four algorithms. These four algorithms allow us to evaluate a single uh, cutmore clark refinement step entirely. And this is how it works. So uh, it starts with a, a face point uh, step that creates a vertex point for each face of the uh, input mesh. Um, so for this particular step, for, inst uh, for instance, the, vertici the vertex points are computed using a scattering approach where each half edge contributes to a single uh, vertex point and specifically the one uh, whose uh, face produces the, uh, the vertex point. So, so for instance, this half edge here contributes to this vertex point, this half edge to this one, and this one to, to this one. Similarly, we have a, an edge step that computes uh, that creates a vertex point for each edge of the input mesh, and here again, each half edge contributes to the half edge it span, uh, the edge sorry it spans. A vertex point uh, that creates a vertex point for each of those of the input mesh. So here, um, the ha each half edge co uh, contributes to exactly one vertex point, and it's the one uh, that is carrying, um, whose vertex is carried by, by the half edge. So for instance, this vertex point here is computed using this half edge that departs from it, this one, and this one. And finally, the topology step that computes a one-to-four mapping of the half edges to uh, assemble these newly created verte vertex points into quads. And with these four algorithms at hand, we are able to evaluate the refinement step uh, entirely. So a nice property is that each step is consists actually of a for loop over all of the half edges. And for the vertex points, so the face, edge, and vertex points, we are simply scattering an information from half edges to the from the half edge buffer to the vertex buffer. So it turns out that this is really trivial to parallelize. So we uh, discussed two implementations in our paper. We have an OpenGL based one where we parallelize the for loop using a dispatch compute. So we wrote four compute shaders that are invoked using a dispatch compute over the half edges of the meshes. And we also wrote uh, a CPU implementation that uses uh, OpenMP and uh, parallel four to, to uh, over the half edges as well. And for these red areas, we simply need to have a, an atomic add operations because since all the half edges are processed in parallel, they may access the uh, vertex point memory in concurrently. So the atomic instruction allows you to do that safely. And so with these, uh, with these implementations at hand, we uh, started by benching the parallel performances of our algorithm. So we started with a, a single-threaded CPU and went all the way down to eight threads on um, uh, a thread read per CPU. And we noticed that for, so the vertex point here is the grouped uh, algorithm one, two, three, and the half-edge refinement is this one. And so what we observed is that for both uh, groups, we get perfect uh, scalability, meaning that the, perform the performances increase linearly with uh, respect to, to thread count. And then we benched also our GPU implementation, which obviously has more than eight threads. And so here we also benefit from the, the parallel nature of our algorithm pretty uh, evidently. Um, so with this algorithm at hand, we started benching our, we benched our algorithm against uh, open subdiv. So first in the context of dynamic topology, which was the, the original motivation for this work. And so for this, uh, we obtained very large speedups, as I mentioned uh, in the introduction. And for static topology, again, we have more or less similar performances. We also benched our method against uh, other open source libraries. So uh, the reason why we grouped, we did two groups is because most open source libraries are, don't support semi-sharp creases. So semi-sharp creases are these yellow edges here that allow you allow the, uh, the, an artist to control the sharpness of the edge of the uh, subdivision surface. So for this uh, batch uh, of tests, we don't have semi-sharp creases actually, uh, but we do have non quad faces and boundaries. So in this particular configuration, we tested against open subdiv, uh, the method of nice no which is uh, what open subdiv uh, builds upon, the method of uh, Patney and colleagues, which only supports quads, so you only have these two uh, bars here, and um, uh, the, the method of Mlakar and colleagues, which is uh, a very recent paper that was introduced a, a couple of months ago at uh, Eurographics, and it does pretty much the same thing in ours. Actually, in practice, it outperforms us uh, slightly mo uh, mo most of the time. Um, 
the difference between their approach and ours is that they rely on a, a more sophisticated mesh data structure, so specifically a um, sparse mesh matrix representation. Uh, so, I mean, it's it's essentially an alternative approach to ours, and it's up to uh, the developers to, to choose which uh, data structure best uh, suits their needs. Um, so, yeah, the uh, uh, integrity of our benchmarks is available in supplemental materials. So we did exhaustive tests on uh, a wide variety of subdivision depth and uh, CPU thread counts. So I, if you're interested in this, I, I invite you to, to go and check, uh, check them out. And uh, inter one interesting thing I, I want to talk about here is that out of these uh, exhaustive benchmarks, we realized that our algorithm was uh, bottlenecked by memory bandwidth. And the reason, uh, the, the, the reason, well, the, the way we discovered this is that uh, at some point we tried to compute the vertex point in half precision. And this, it, this gave us uh, a bunch of uh, artifacts that you can see here, the obvious precision artifacts, so you can't really use it as extension. But it did give us uh, a significant speed up, ranging from 1.1 to 1.25 uh, speed up in, in our uh, test meshes. Um, so, um, Obviously, the uh, floating point half a floating point can't be used, but maybe uh, this is a discussion we have in the paper. Maybe it would be useful to uh, to have uh, a GLSA extension that allows to compute uh, you, uh, normalized integer sixteen bit integers uh, atomically. So we could uh, actually store our vertex buffer as at sixteen bit precision rather than uh, thirty two. Uh, yeah. So this concludes my talk. So uh, hopefully. You guys caught the main uh, insight of our paper. We have these slight arrows that multiply by exactly four throughout the uh, refinement of uh, Cartmore Clark. This is always true, uh, even in the presence of uh, non quiet faces. And the actual implementation is really simple, so it's available on my GitHub. Uh, it's really a few thousand lines of uh, C code for the CPU implementation, and I think it's roughly a thousand lines of uh, GLSL code for the uh, GLSL uh, implementation. Uh, in future work, so one thing we, we looked into uh, in this project was uh, only uniform subdivision. And in this uh, work in progress project I I'm showing here, we are actually adaptively tessellating the uh, subdivisions we are, we, we've computed uh, using our novel algorithm, which I, I just presented. Uh, originally, I, uh, Kenneth and I had this in, the, in uh, an earlier submission, but we removed it because it, it was too exhaustive to uh, to talk about both the half edge insight and this uh, specific algorithm so we'll probably publish it uh, at some point uh, later later this year another thing we'll look into is to generalize our half edge based approach to other subdivision schemes so kenneth is looking uh, into uh, adapting loop subdivision um, using a, a half edge based uh, approach as well this, uh, well, with that said, this concludes my talk. If you have some questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you.